Good morning, everybody. Forrest from Thrust Institute of Maintenance. We've got a great project for our students today. We are going to be taking this Piper Cherokee fuselage and doing some metal repairs to it. This involves removing pieces of metal, installing new pieces of metal, and riveting them together. Riveting is a process where we use a mechanical fastener, install it between two sheets of metal, and smash it together to hold everything together. The original metal on that airplane was 32 thousandths of an inch thick. This is 60 thousandths. The other problem is, it is a harder alloy. This is 6061T6. Probably the strongest aluminum alloy we use on airplanes. It tends to be very hard, very difficult to bend and work with. Plus, being a T6, it has a full heat treatment and work hardening already done to the metal. So what I would suggest is probably to find one of the thinner sheets here we can bring over. I'm going to bring out some of the basic riveting tools and show you guys what that looks like. The idea with it is got, in this case, a dome head for our dome head rivets, our AN470s. And the rivet head sits down in there. And you got a trigger on there, and the trigger is pressure sensitive. So if you want to hit it harder, you pull harder. You want to hit it less, you let off a little bit. But when you're using these, a couple important rules. One is get it right center down the rivet and press down firmly into the rivet. And you'll pull the trigger and that will activate the flow. Now, if you want to limit the amount of air or the amount of power in here, you're going to go ahead and change the dial. In the kits that have the rivet guns, you're going to find a few different things. One is going to be a set of dies for different sized rivets. The other are going to be bucking bars. This is what the other person uses to drive that rivet. So the idea is I have a rivet in between the bucking bar and the head of this, and they get driven together by the force of the rivet coming back and forth, and the guy holding the bucking bar up against the back end and it squeezes that rivet together. And we have different bucking bars because depending where you're trying to buck a rivet, you might need to get under something or around a corner. So if one's not working, feel free to use another. How do we drill aluminum? Uh, fast, low. fast, low pressure, more importantly with an air drill. So this is the best way to do it. Now modern electric drills will run fast enough. It is possible to do it. But I'm going to highly recommend using an air drill for better quality drill through there. The rest of this box is going to be filled with a couple important things. First and foremost, we have a box of drill bits there that's ready to go. But in the bottom, you're going to have a full setup of Clecos. Now, Clecos, kind of a nifty little spring loaded fastener, and uh, come with a set of pliers. But the idea is you drill that hole and it has a spring loaded clamp. So to install it, you squeeze down, this goes into the hole, and when you release it, the prongs come out to the side, securing the two pieces of metal together. So really rapidly, a guy can come over to an airplane and install one of these, squeeze in and let it go. Now, if you had to get these out quickly, same thing, you would take the Clecos out by squeezing down and pulling back. And you'd be able to remove all of them to get to what you need. When installing a piece of metal after you got it sized up properly, what I suggest is start by match drilling one hole, take the Cleco, install it back into the hole you're trying to secure together and then start working down the holes so that way you spread out the tension and of all the holes you're putting into it. Make sense? All righty, any questions? That's our tooling. Do a lap joint, one going from there to there, and then a flat piece over the top. And that may be the way to do this, right? So what we'll do is we'll break this down to three different skin pieces. So we'll need to cut, kind of cut this out and trim it. So we'll have three parts? Correct three parts, and then this one will be lapped over the top of the other two. Think we can do that? Alrighty, 
So I'm gonna grab you one last tool you're gonna need, and it's gonna be the metal shears. So, so what somebody has to do is start figuring out how big these three pieces need to be. Now I'm gonna tell you the best way to do this, remember that rule we talked about this morning, edge distance. The idea is we still have to maintain edge distance from these holes. So lap joint is when you have two pieces of metal coming together and just like we're seeing here, you have one piece of metal going over the top of another. As simple as it gets, easy to put together. General rule of thumb as far as lap joints are concerned is that as the air hits the airplane, we don't want it getting below. So as we make this lap joint, this piece of metal is going to below, go below this one here. And it just walks itself forward, really easy to use. Start at the top, drill these, and Clico after every single one. Then, the ones on the front here, we can take the drill and just drop it straight through. There you go. That's how you do it. Now he's pushing. Well guys, we're finishing up the rest of our sheet metal project on the Piper Cherokee fuselage. Looking forward to the next steps. We're gonna get all the remaining paint off, get it painted, and eventually make this an avionics trainer for the students. Till next time guys, I'm Forrest, this is Thrust.